live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering Magento Imagine 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Welcome to The Cube, I'm Lisa Martin at The Wind in Las Vegas for Magento Imagine 2019. This is a three day event, you can hear a lot of exciting folks networking behind me, talking tech, talking e-commerce innovation, and we're pleased to welcome fresh off the keynote stage a couple of guests from HP. We've got Jillian Campbell, the head of Omnichannel Strategy and Operations. Jillian, thank you for joining us. Thank you for asking us. Oh, our yeah. pleasure, and Harriet Stobo, Director of Omnichannel Innovation and Solutions, also from HP, welcome. Thank you very much. So Jillian, fresh off the keynote stage, enjoyed your presentation this morning. Thank you. Everybody, I think, in the world knows HP. Those of us consumers going, you know what, actually that reminds me, I need a new, a new printer. We can help you there. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. excellent. Well, Whether I'm printers. shopping online or in yep. a store. So you have got this really interesting uh, keynote this morning talking about what HP is doing, starting an APAC to really transform this shopping experience. Talk to us a little bit about HP, as I think you mentioned it, as a $50 billion startup, and from a digital experience perspective, what you needed to enable. Yeah, so as I said, HP have been around for 80 years, and in 2015 we became our own entity, HP Inc., and really started looking at how do we enable digital uh, to be pervasive through everything that we do, our internal processes, our reach to customers, and identified a great opportunity to really take leading edge in our digital commerce uh, capabilities, and we'd already had some early proof points in APJ, so launched the global initiative, and we're now you know, on that journey to uh, enable that best in class experience through the digital platforms. So Harry, talk to us about, you're based in Singapore. Yes. What yep. were some of the um, some of the, the market dynamics that really made it obvious that this is where we want to start building out this omni-channel strategy, mm. starting in APAC. Is it, mm. you know, whether, Jillian, you mentioned before, we started retail spaces, some being expensive, is it more right. mobile experience and expectations on consumers' part? So I think we've got a, a mix of uh, different starting points across Asia. We've got some mega cities like Hong Kong and Singapore rising. Uh, Tokyo, and then we've got you know emerging markets uh, across Southeast Asia, and we don't necessarily have any single um, marketplace that controls the entire market as we might see in other regions. Um, and so we had a lot of runway to go and experiment and try new things. Um, we also have an ecosystem of branded retail in Asia, uh, not in all markets, um, predominantly in India, but also in some markets in Southeast Asia, but allow us to really blend the experience across both online and offline, and to give customers choice at the end of the day, and let them decide how they want to shop and in interact with our brand. Um, so, we have been running Magento One uh, since we first launched uh, our online store businesses in Indonesia and Thailand about six years ago, and then we moved into China, re-platformed a uh, legacy platform onto Magento One, and then that was really the the foundation that we decided to go and build upon um, to become a global program. So we already had some proof points under our belt, you know, with Magento. So, and what were some of those early wins that really started to make this really obvious that this omnichannel experience, the ability to give customers choice, whether they want to start the process online, okay. finish it in store, vice versa, or at least have the opportunity mm -hmm. to have choice. What were some of those early wins and business okay. outcomes that you started to see? Okay. I think even just from, a, because we're all, you know, customers are people. Whether you're a corporate customer, you know, small business, or a consumer, we're all people. And we all know that we shop that way. So it was actually the storyline on that back to HP was we have to enable experiences that we would want to you know, experience as well. And you know, quite a shift for a, a tech company who are really all about the products to be thinking about, well how do we enable really that end-to-end -end experience? And as Harriet said, the runway was open and we already had some proof points. I was new in the job, so I was like all listening to you know, what the team were telling me, we have a great opportunity here, and you know, took that forward as a new concept for the company, we got funding approval, and you know, the rest is you know, the history and, and the journey that we're on. So I think it was just taking a, a different perspective and a, a different approach, 
and working with a team who already had that you know, built some of that credibility and that those proof points with the, the earlier deployments and we kind of took a risk at the time when we started engaging with Magento. They weren't in that you know leadership quadrant, and we, we took a risk to say you know let's let's partner with an energizing company and you know do something a little bit different. And you know we're still here working towards it. So I think that for me was the the breakthrough was just having the you know the tenacity to say we are going to drive this path forward. It may not be how we would have done things in the past, but we're a different company now and we had much more kind of air cover to be able to do that. A little bit more agility and flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys, you talked about, um, Jillian, about all the buyers. We are consumers and we have this expectation, this growing expectation, oh, yeah. that I want to be able to get any and transact anything that I want to buy, whether I'm a procurement person for a company and I'm traveling but I need to approve expenses or I'm a salesperson maybe sitting next to a medium small business customer, I need to have the, the option at least yep. to have this storefront. One of the things that you guys launched in APAC, leveraging the power of Magento Commerce, was click to collect. So tell me a little bit about, from a, maybe an e-commerce cultural perspective, what is it that um, makes people want to have the ability to start online and actually complete the transaction in a physical location? Yeah. So I was in the advisory board yesterday and, and one of the, the other customers of Magento said, until we can invent a way to touch and feel online, there's always going to be a need to have you know, outlets where you can go touch and feel. And I think with Click and Collect, I mean, some of our products are, you know, high-end, uh, you know, PCs and gaming devices mm. and, and printers that it's hard to get a good appreciation of what it looks and feels like online. So if you're going to be spending, you know, significant money, you may want to go in and be able to see the colors, feel the finish. You know, some of our newer products with the, you know, the leather portfolio is not something you can truly appreciate without touching it. So I think, you know, we have to enable again those customers who do want to experience, feel the weight, feel the, you know, feel the finish, see the, the color scheme, because it's hugely important. Again, not for all customers. Some customers are quite happy to spend thousands of dollars on an online purchase without seeing it and then making sure they have a good facility to be able to, you know, if they wanted to, to be able to return if they got the wrong product. As so. we look though at, like we talked about, this consumer consumerization of everything where we have this expectation, and, and the numbers, I think you even mentioned it maybe in your keynote, Jillian, the numbers of, or somebody did this morning, like upwards of half of all transactions are starting on mobile, so we've got to start there. What are some of the things that you guys have seen in region in terms of mobile conversions? So there's still a massive gap between desktop and mobile conversion, first of all. I mean, we're not anywhere near parity between the two. Um, but obviously we're seeing a huge volume of traffic coming in as well, and it's shifting that way. So you'd expect it to drop uh, as a result. Um, I think with Magenta, what we've seen um, over the you know, past few deployments that we've been running, uh, I mean, we're over 8% improvement. Um, but the desktop conversion is far higher. Um, I mean, in, in terms of improvement and actual conversion. Uh, so we've still got a long way to go um, there, and that's an iterative process. That's a, a journey that probably never ends in terms of ongoing optimization and experimentation. So, yeah, a, a lot, lot happening there. I think just on the click and collect topic as well, but you're asking about people wanting to start their journey online and come, come into bricks and mortar. Um, you know, we, we're seeing a huge uptake on it just by experimenting, by piloting. Um, over 26% of our consumer notebooks in India uh, that we put on this, onto this program were being collected in store. And this is in environments which are inherently chaotic on the streets. You don't want to go out there, but actually I'm passing that way anyway, so it's just easier for me to pick it up on the way home and probably quicker because I can collect in two hours. So you know, it's just giving people customer choice, no additional incentive, and, that, and it seemed to take. So now we're expanding out regionally and uh, so, yeah. so you said there's this morning in Jillian in your keynote, eight markets covered, mostly APAC, but also yep. in Latin America. We're just starting in, in Latin America. Well, we're, again, the development process, it's not just as simple as we're switching on. So we've been doing a lot of work for this past six months with Latin America, uh, the team there. They're super excited to get launched. There's 
you know, some differences there. We talked about you know, the, the regional variation around you know, fulfillment models that, that we have to adapt towards. But the intent is to, to get Latin America deployed, leveraging you know, some of the learnings from what we've done in, in Asia Pacific, and then start to move around more into our uh, you know, MIA region, and then ultimately back into the US and Canada. So as you look forward, and of course you mentioned we're on this journey, right? What are some of the key learnings that you are going to apply? You mentioned this morning something that was very intriguing, and that was respect the integrity of the Magento platform. Talk about that in context of some of the other learnings that you'd recommend for colleagues in similar or other industries to be able to achieve what you have on a yeah. global scale. I think from the outset, there was this kind of like baggage of deployments of capabilities, not just in commerce, but deployment of capabilities across HP that we had not respected the integrity of the platform. We had you know, adjusted the code and developed on the, the code to make it HP specific. And with the new HP Inc company, one of the guiding principles was no. When, you, when we buy or you know, the leverage uh, software applications, respect it for what it is, and adjust business processes, adjust integration, rather than adjust the core, so that we can get the advantage of the longer term opportunity with upgrades and such like. So it was really just a foundational, you know, let's not go in here with a mindset that we know better than the core. The core is there for a reason, and then build around that and, and ensure the integration. And I think, you know, with Heriot's leadership and being able to, you know, just keep that firm is why we can be successful and be successful longer term as well. So that all the, you know, one of the things we talked about yesterday also, the excellent capabilities that are coming with Adobe and the integration that you know, we talked about the recommendation, the Adobe Sensei and, and integrating that with Magento Core. If you don't keep to the you know, respect integrity, those upgrades and capabilities become really hard to take benefit of. So we're really excited about, you know, again, sticking with the core and enabling and growing the core with Magento and Adobe. I would just build on it. I mean, I think it's never going to be easy running a global commerce platform, single instance, multiple countries, you know, 27 markets to get started with. Who knows where we're going to end? It's always going to be a challenge. So, you know, we have to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. You know, these upgrades are fast and furious, and that's great, and we all get lots of benefit. You know, if, if we start going down our own path, you know, we've lost yeah. it. We've lost the benefit. Yeah. You know? And that's one of the things too that um, Jason Wolsey said this morning was that what Magento is going to be enabling businesses to achieve without getting in their way. And it kind of sounds here like mm. you're saying the same thing. We've got to be able to respect the right. technologies that we're building so we don't get in our own way. Yeah. We right. keep it simple as we want to expand globally. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you're creating these personalized experiences with consumers, and that personalization is so important because it's more and more, not only are we transacting or wanting to on mobile, but we want our brands like HP to know us. Yep. We want you to know our brand value, our, you know, our average order value, so that we can become part of the experience, but also ideally get rewarded for being loyal. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, just coming to, to mobile again, but you know, 2.3 delivers the native PWA capabilities, which we're super excited to get started with. Um, you know, we've got so many use cases for this straight away, right out of the box. But you know, we've got to do it gradually, do it the right way. Um, I think we're also aware that we're not going to be able to run with PWA in all markets straight away because not all markets are ready for it. Quite frankly, user behavior is that a cultural thing? Ready. It's purely cultural, maybe technical and you know, just technical ecosystems as well. And, Places like China, in particular, um, where you know customers use app stores, but they use app stores from every single phone manufacturer out there. That's where the customer is. We can't just move away from that. So we need to keep with some of those you know legacy approaches for a little while. Um, 
and then, yeah, test in other regions and then take the learnings when, when we're ready to adopt it, you know? Exciting, so here we are at, this is the first Magento Imagine since the Adobe acquisition. Jillian, let's wrap things up with you. What are your, you mentioned you were part of the customer advisory board yesterday. Just some of your perspectives on this year's event now that Magento is powering the yeah. Adobe Commerce Cloud. And actually I attended the Adobe Summit a few weeks ago here also uh, in Vegas and started to see the thread of commerce coming into that conference and then seeing the Adobe, you know, the experience uh, coming into Magento and I just think it's a perfect combination of opportunities, especially for a company like HP where we're, we really need to connect you know, marketing and sales and support across the customer journey and the capabilities with Adobe and the, some of the marketing stack and then the commerce stack and you know, support, bringing that together, I think it's a super exciting opportunity for us. And you know, the, the partnership that we have with both Adobe and Magento, again now is, is one is, I, I really think we're just starting you know, what the next journey is going to look like. Isn't that right? We, we feel that about so many things. We're just starting. Well, Jillian, Harriet, it's been a pleasure to have you on the queue from Magento Imagine 2019. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you both for your indeed. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from the Win Las Vegas at Magento Imagine 2019. Thanks for watching.